In this video, we're going to focus on how we can create these labels nicely around a radio bar chart and make sure that they, they are automatically calculated as our values changes. So to create the radio bar chart labels, what we need to do here first of all is having the template. And this template here comes from this specific video here. Just follow this video, how to add labels in a radio bar chart in Chart.js 4. Of course, the source code is also available if you want at my Patreon page. So what we're going to do is, first of all, we need to make sure we have enough space here in every corner or every side to ensure that there's enough space for the text. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down here and put a padding around it. We're going to see in the options, we're going to say here layout. And then in the layout here, make sure we spell this correctly. Padding, give it a 30 pixel padding. Save, refresh. So as you can see here, now we have enough space for every a specific area. So what we're going to do next is create a plugin and I'll just call this a very simple term, a rotated labels or labels around. So I'll say rotated labels, although it's not really rotated. So you can find a, probably a better term for it, but for now let's go with this. So then I'm going to say a constant equals, give it an ID, same name, and then we're going to say here after data sets draw, and then we can say your chart, arts, and plugins. <clears throat> Although we will not be using the plugins and the arcs uh, value anyway. The most important one will be the chart here. So once we have this, I'm going to say a constant and what I'm going to do is here an object destructuring. If you don't know what an object destructuring is, check out my video in the description. It's, uh, it's the video understanding charges object destructuring. So what I'm going to do here is I want to have CTX, I want to have the data. I want to have the chart area and I guess, well, who knows if we need this, I'm not sure. Let's say here top, left, uh, right, uh, let's put them in there, I'm, I'm not sure if I even need this one. And then we can just keep it like that. Alright, so now we have this part. Here's the thing we need to do. We know our data sets has different values, but what I want to make sure is I want to grab the highest value because if we have this rotation here, the value of 12 should be here or whatever that value is, that should be the ending value. And we start at zero here. So what I want to do here is to create <clears throat> basically a data set. So I'm going to say a constant and let's say your data points. And this here will be just a, um, I guess here a map array. So I'm going to say the data, because we're going to use the data here, and then I'm going to say data sets. And then what I want to say here, dot map. So basically, for every data sets that we have, we're going to get the specific value. And if you're going to look here up, you can see here the values, just a single value here anyway. We're just going to grab this data value of one, or whatever the value is. So we're going to say here, uh, <clears throat> the data set, comma, index. And then function arrow expression. And then what we want to do is what we want to return. Well, let me just show you the console log. Data set dot data. And if I save this, we should get specifically an array one or at least the value 12 and nine. All of these items are in here. <clears throat> so this works all nicely. So what I want to do is I want to return this value and because of the constant of data points, this becomes immediately an array. So if I say your console log data points, save, refresh, open up the developer tab, you can see here we get an array and there we are. We get all of these items here, absolutely phenomenal. So we get all of the values here nicely. And we could even do it more specifically, I guess this should be even more better. So you get the values as an array, or at least the values individually, and not an array that recognizes there's a value. So that's very important. So we have this here now. So now we can start to play around with this. So what I want to do here next is to get the highest value of it. So what I'm going to say here, constant max will be equal to the math.max. And then we can say here, I want to grab the full array value here save that refresh and then we have this here of course what i want to make sure console log the max value save refresh there we are 
So I see here this error. I guess that's because I am using one of my older versions here. Am I correct? Yeah, yes, probably I need to get the other link. Doesn't really matter. It's really not a big problem in this case. <clears throat> so you can see here, it recognizes that value 12 is the highest. And if I go and increase this one here, uh, let's make this 15 or 16. You can see here, it will work, but of course the rotation is full or complete. Why? Because this is based on a hard-coded value here. That would look normal. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We all what we need to test is, does it recognize the highest value if ever something changes? And it does. So now we have this part. So what I want to do here is the following. I want to make a label and I, I'm just thinking that would probably be the most practical. Having a value here, a value there, down here and here. There's always four points here, but also here at the 45 degree angle and here at the other 45 plus 90 degree, so it's 135 degree angle, and here, I guess, whatever that is. So here, there, there, so eventually you have like seven points. So what I want to do now is start working on that. So I'm going to say here constant, and let's uh, see what we can do here. Oh, we have, sorry, before I even go in there, if I'm going to put in so many of these labels here all around, let's say seven in total, we should have whatever the value is of that moment. So if this is zero, here is 12, whatever is here all between needs to be calculated. And if it's whatever is here, should be maybe two, three, four, whatever. It should be four probably and here somewhere eight. So you should understand these values. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to say here an increment. Increment equals the max value divided by six. So I need to figure out whatever these values is and then you plus it every single time. So once we did this, now what we're going to do is do a little bit of a tricky part. So pay attention here. So we're going to say here, our label array will be equal to an, the array dot from. And make sure we spell this correctly, array dot from. So to create an array from what exactly? From this object here. We're going to say here the length will be equal to seven because we want seven items and then we say comma and then what I want to do here is whatever that value is so there's an underscore so that's a reference to whatever that value is the index and then we're going to do a callback functionality and increment that every single time so we say here the increment <coughs> multiplied by the index which makes sense because every time you have the index, 0, 1, etc., etc., it will increment this and then it will gradually increase. So now we have this here. So this sounds all very complicated, but let me just show you what we have here now. Label array, save, refresh, we get the values. And what exactly? 0, 2, 4, 6, etc., etc. Let me just change this and let's make here a new one. Let's say this one will be now 20. Let's see what happens. And as you can see here, it does give us some weird numbers. We could probably remove the decimals if ever, and don't ignore this one here. But you can see here, it does recognize what we want. So this means that this is now fully automated, but that's number one. Of course, we need to have the angle as well, or the positioning for this. So what we're going to do here is the next part. Uh, let's see, where are we? We have to go down here. So this is now confirmed as a working mo model. Now, what I need to do is start to use it, whatever the label array is, and then with the angle. So what I'm going to say here is a constant, and I'm going to say here, uh, let's say starting angle. And the starting angle will be equal to, and I'm going to explain to you this, because the normally, by default, the starting angle zero is here at the right side, and then this will be 90, 180, 270 and then that will be 360 again right zero and 360 would be the full circle but what i want to do i want to start at the northern point here that is basically 270 degree but i don't want to use the number 270 degrees because that would be very confusing so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to say here from zero minus 90 degrees so we're going up here in rotation so what i'm going to say here minus 90 and this minus 90 is the 90 degree angle so then what I'm going to say here, constant, and uh, what we can do here, oh, I guess we can even hard code this, I realize. It just makes sense. 
So what I'm going to say here, I'll just make this, and maybe later on I'll make a video to soft coat this. So that's probably the easiest way. So we're going to say here, angle position, and here the angle position will be an array. We will start with 90. And then what I want to do is I want to have minus 45 degrees, that means somewhere here. Then we have here 0, 45, 90, etc., etc. 0, 45, 90, uh, 135, and finally here 180 degrees. So we have these numbers here. What we need next is because we have the rotation or the angle, we need to have the center point here. Charge.js gives us a very nice way to do this. So let's start to work on this right now. So what I'm going to do here is do a console log first and just show you what this method is. We say chart.get data sets, uh, not, not data sets, but data set individual meta. And then I'm going to say here zero and I'm going to just show you immediately what it is. So data index zero. So if I save this, refresh and I get a lot of information here. What I want to do is remove every console log that we don't need. And I think that's the only one here. All right. We get here the arc and we can get here a few items that we need to know. The X and Y here is basically the center position here. And then what we also have is the outer radius and the outer radius is basically from this point calculating how many pixels going here, there, or etc., etc. basically this outer radius, which is basically from the center, it is 278 pixels away from it. So all of this information is very useful for us. So I have this, what I'm going to say here, constant uh, center X will be equal to this. Then what I want to do is I want to grab this and center Y because we have the Y coordinates, center Y. And then um, what we have more is basically the outer radius because that is the radiant or uh, uh, the, I guess the radius for the circle. So this is very important. So I say constant and we're going to call this outer radius it will be equal to just grab all of this, put it in here and grab this name here, put that in there, and there we are. So we get all of the information here that we need. But what I want to do is the outer radius, because if I put in the label here, there and there, it will probably be exactly on top of this here. And I think what would make more sense, well, what would make more sense is to put maybe a few additional pixels here so we are outside and not on top exactly on this red bar. Uh, well, later on we'll do it, but I will say here plus zero. And later on you understand why we have this plus will be plus 10 pixels, 20 pixels, whatever would be necessary. So now we have this here. What I want to do now is I want to grab all of these angle positions and then coordinate all the label numbers around it nicely. So what I'm going to do here, I guess we can make, we can uh, create here a map or for each something like that. Let's call label position. Well, I guess we can make here, because this here should be all incorporated and then we're going to grab all of these data together. So what I'm going to do here is map. So it's a constant label position. Then we're going to say here the angle position dot map. Then we say here for every angle, function error expression. And then what we're going to do here is constant and then the angle uh, the radius will be based on whatever the angle is multiplied by multiplied by math dot pi and why are we doing this because by default one pi is a half circle two pi is a full circle but of course we're not working with pi circles or well we're working with with the circles and pi but i want to work with degree that we have here so we have to convert this basically into a uh, calculation and then divide by 180 degrees. This is very important. So we can convert this into a degree so you understand the exact position. So now we have this. Then what I want to do here is constant x will be equal to center because that's the center coordinate of x plus the outer radius that we have calculated because now basically we're calculating is this here and where exactly are we going to put it there 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 etc etc and i will show you later on exactly how this works 
And then we're going to use here some mathematics, math.cos, and an angle red. So this here is the uh, triangle uh, calculation, and I forgot the term from the guy. I should have known. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, the, the, I will check later on what the, the person is. I am having another person in my mind, but that's not the one. All right, I just quickly check it. It's Pythagoras. My bad. So we do here the same, but here, of course, we need to calculate. The other one is the sinus, and this is the cosinus. All right, so now we have this. So then what I want to do is I want to return these values, the x and y specifically, so we have the x and y coordinates of our angle. So if I save this, refresh, nothing happens yet. Let's do a console log now of our array with every x and y that we have returned here. Console log, save this, refresh, and now you can see here the exact coordinates of where all these items will be. And you can see there's a total of the length of seven. So there's seven items because we have seven labels. So now let's start to work on drawing the text here. And what we can do for this is a for each. So we have here these uh, labels here that we have here. We created a length of seven labels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this array and I'm going to say here dot for each label and then we have the index function error expression. We're going to put it in here. I'm going to say first of all ctx.save because I want to save all variables above. Then what I want to say here is ctx.text, I guess text align center to put this in the center. We probably need to have select a font size as well. Ctx uh, font equals, let's say 12 pixels. Uh, do we want to make it bold? Let's make it bold. 12 pixels and then sans serif, which is the default font family for chart.js. Then what I want to do here is I want to give it a color. So let's say here ctx.fill style for the color of the font. I'll make it black. So it's just basic. Then once I have this, I want to say here ctx.fill text to draw the text here. And I can say here abc. And then we can put in here the x and y. And basically what I need here is we have the label. That is basically the text already. But here, how do we get the X and Y coordinates that we have here? Well, basically these coordinates here. Quite simple. I'm going to grab this, put it in here. Then I'm going to say here, I want to get the index. And which index, of course, depending on the for each loop, dot X. That is for the X coordinate. We do the same logic for the Y coordinate. Then you can do this. Let's save that. Then refresh. There you are. As you can see here, these numbers are all nice, but exactly on top, or it's overlapping. And then how do we solve this? Let's scroll up here. Remember here the outer radius. What I want to do is here, let's say maybe 15 pixels, save, refresh. We get it like that. And now it looks absolutely phenomenal. And we have these labels here. So what would happen if I change the value? So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to scroll up here. We have this here and I see them already our uh, thing. So what I'm going to say here, I'm just going to make a constant val value basically. I'll make this 60. And the reason why I'm doing this is so I can just easily play around with it because this here is already hard coded and that can counteract on our work. So I'm going to put that in there and I say this one here will be a value as well. If I refresh, you can see here now it all works nicely and it understands the green is 60. And as you can see the rotation and all the numbers are recalculated nicely. And that's it.